Welcome to the second session on aromaticity. We have discussed the basic requirements and conditions for a molecule to be aromatic. Today we will discuss certain examples and categorize them as aromatic, anti-aromatic and non-aromatic looking at their structures. But before that let's see a checklist of requirements for different molecules. So for an aromatic molecule there must be a cyclic structure yes the molecule must be planar there must be conjugation present in the molecule and the number of conjugated electrons must be equal to 4n plus 2 that is the Huckel number which we have discussed in a previous video the requirements for an anti-aromatic molecule or a molecule to be anti-aromatic are that yes it must have a cyclic structure it will be planar of course there will be conjugation but the number of conjugated electrons will be 4n now anti-aromatic molecules are usually highly unstable because of the presence of conjugation or because of the presence of 4n number of electrons in conjugation but what about a non-aromatic molecule it may or may not have a cyclic structure it may or may not be planar and conjugation is also not a necessary requirement for a molecule to be non-aromatic so what this checklist tells us is that if a molecule fails to meet any of the above conditions that is a cyclic structure planarity or conjugation it will be regarded as a non aromatic molecule and that is why the number of conjugated electrons does not matter in this case so let's see some examples and then classify these molecules as aromatic anti aromatic or non aromatic so starting with a simple three membered cycle having a double bond in the structure this is a cyclopropene molecule now let's apply all the requirements for aromaticity anti aromaticity or non aromaticity so it has a cyclic structure yes both aromatic and anti aromatic molecules are cyclic in nature is there any conjugation present no this double bond is an isolated double bond so it does not have any conjugation and that is why this molecule is non aromatic because it does not have any conjugation present uh, in the structure but what if we have a positive charge on uh, this carbon here in this three membered ring along with a double bond now because of the presence of this positive charge this uh, double bond can delocalize over so it can switch over between these two carbons and uh, that will leave this carbon uh, electron deficient so the positive charge then resides here and uh, in the third resonance structure this may uh, this double bond may shift here leaving this carbon electron deficient or with a positive charge so this positive charge is spread over the whole uh, molecule or all the three carbon atoms and then because of that the double bond is also shifting between all the three carbon atoms now this molecule has a cyclic structure it has conjugation and because this carbon here having a positive charge it is sp2 hybridized and these two carbons are also sp2 hybridized and sp2 carbons you know they are uh, they have a planar geometry so this molecule is absolutely planar and the number of electrons involved in conjugation in this uh, ion are two so only two electrons of this double bond are involved in of this pi bond are involved in conjugation and two is a Huckel number and because it meets all the requirements of aromaticity this molecule or this ion is an aromatic ion right but what if we have a negative charge on this carbon here 
So now we have two electrons on this carbon and we have a carbon-carbon double bond as well. This, these two electrons can delocalize over and uh, this delocalization or conjugation will happen throughout the system throughout all the three carbon atoms because of which this negative charge will reside on all the three carbon atoms uh, alternatively and this double bond will also shift its positions. Now looking at the structure you would think it is a, a small ring so it must be planar because of the negative charge and the double bond here and uh, because there is conjugation also this uh, con these conjugated electrons form a closed loop and uh, also it has a cyclic structure so it must be anti-aromatic because all of these requirements are for an anti-aromatic molecule or ion if it has four n number of conjugated electrons and if you count the number of electrons involved in conjugation these are four four is not a huckle number and that is why you would think that this ion is an anti-aromatic ion but some studies have shown that it is uh, slightly more stable as compared to an anti-aromatic molecule or ion and that is why it's uh, because of its uh, lower energy or because of its uh, relatively higher stability as compared to an anti-aromatic molecule it has been regarded as a non-aromatic ion so, so cyclopropenyl anion is non-aromatic in nature it's not anti-aromatic then we have a four-membered ring with a double bond. It's a cyclobutene ring. So we have a cyclic structure. Yes, we have, uh, do we have planarity? No. These two carbons here are sp3 hybridized and also this double bond is isolated. So there is no conjugation in this molecule. And because it fails these two uh, criteria or conditions, it means it is non-aromatic. But what if we have a positive charge on one of the carbon atoms, previously sp3 hybridized, now this is sp2 hybridized. So now this uh, positive charge and the double bond can be involved in conjugation with each other. But one thing you have to keep in mind is that the double bond and the positive charge, they can delocalize over uh, between uh, these three carbon atoms. This carbon here is sp3 hybridized and it is not involved in conjugation. So yes, there is conjugation, but because this is an sp3 carbon, uh, first, it is out of plane and second, it is not involved in conjugation. So there is no closed loop of circulating or conjugating electrons. So this ion is also non-aromatic in nature and what if we have a negative charge here again we have conjugation between the negative charge and the double bond but because again we have an sp3 carbon here uh, although we have four electrons involved in conjugation here just like this uh, uh, cyclopropenyl anion but because it does not form a closed loop or all the carbon atoms are not involved in conjugation it is not anti-aromatic but it is non-aromatic now we have a four-membered ring with two double bonds. So it's a cyclobutadiene molecule. It's a cyclic structure, of course. It's highly planar and uh, it has two double bonds which are involved in conjugation. And this, uh, these electrons shift their positions and they, uh, the electron density is uh, distributed among all the four carbon atoms equally. And because of the planarity and the conjugation in this molecule, this molecule is highly unstable. If you look at the number of electrons present in the uh, in conjugation, there are four, and four is not a Huckel number. So there are four n electrons involved in conjugation. In fact, not four n plus two. So this cyclobutadiene is highly unstable, and that is why it is anti-aromatic. This is a cyclopentadiene molecule and again we have four carbons as sp2 hybridized and one of them is sp3 hybridized which is not involved in conjugation. So this molecule is non-aromatic in nature. But what if we have a negative charge here on this previously sp3 hybridized carbon. Now we have an anion here. And because you know that anion has two electrons, so these can be involved in delocalization. 
So now we have six electrons in conjugation and because of this conjugation uh, the molecule becomes uh, absolutely planar and six you know is a Haeckel number so this is an aromatic ion cyclopentadienyl anion is aromatic what about the cyclopentadienyl cation now we have four electrons in conjugation so four is not a Haeckel number and that is why this is anti-aromatic so we have four n electrons and a positive charge here this empty p orbital is involved in conjugation and that makes it highly unstable so it is anti-aromatic in nature then we have the well-known benzene molecule and it has six carbons in the ring three double bonds are there there are six electrons in conjugation forming a closed loop and because there are Huckel number of electrons, 4 and plus 2 number of electrons involved in conjugation, so it's, a, it's an aromatic molecule. We can have aromaticity or anti-aromaticity in uh, heterocyclic molecules as well. So we have pyridine here, which has a six-membered cyclic structure, five carbons and one nitrogen present in the ring. This nitrogen has a lone pair. So now you would think whether this lone pair is involved in conjugation or not. Some people say that it is not required uh, to be involved in conjugation, but that is not true. It's not up to the will of these electrons to be involved or not involved in conjugation. But what makes them uh, getting involved in conjugation is the orientation or the symmetry of their orbitals. If the orbital in which these two electrons are present uh, is parallel to the pi electron system or pi orbital system then of course it will overlap now this nitrogen here is sp2 hybridized so it's, it has a planar geometry and it is connected to two carbon atoms and it has a lone pair an orbital having this lone pair here because of the planar geometry this lone pair will be perpendicular to the pi orbitals present in the ring we will discuss it in detail in another video but right here you just remember that just like benzene in which all the p orbitals uh, of the ring are parallel to each other these p orbitals in pyridine are also parallel to each other but the orbital in which these two electrons are present is not parallel it is perpendicular and when orbitals are perpendicular to each other they will never overlap so this these electrons are not involved in conjugation so apart from these two electrons we have six electrons in conjugation and that makes it a Huckel number and that is why pyridine is aromatic it is planar as well so that is why it is aromatic if we have a three membered ring with a nitrogen and a double bond in the ring the nitrogen again you know it has a lone pair associated with it and it could be involved in conjugation uh, with the double bond and that is why it is anti-aromatic because it's a planar molecule and uh, there are four n number of electrons present in this conjugated system then we have an oxygen in a three-membered ring along with a double bond and oxygen you know has two lone pairs so this lone pair again one of these lone pairs will be involved in conjugation with the double bond the other will be perpendicular as we discussed uh, for pyridine uh, so the second lone pair will not be involved in conjugation only one lone pair will be involved in conjugation so that makes it four electrons and again it is anti-aromatic because of four n number of electrons involved in conjugation and it is highly unstable then we have a five member ring with a nitrogen pyrrole. Pyrrole has two double bonds and a nitrogen having a lone pair which can be involved in conjugation with the double bonds making it a total of six electrons involved in conjugation making the molecule planar so pyrrole is an aromatic molecule. Then if we have oxygen in the ring along with the Two double bonds again oxygen having two, lo two lone pairs only one of them will be involved in conjugation because 
uh, one of the orbitals having the lone pair will be parallel to the pi system the other will be perpendicular to the pi system so a total of six electrons will actually be involved in conjugation that is a Huckel number making this molecule aromatic as well if we have sulfur in the ring uh, it's pretty much the same as oxygen in the ring so thio is also aromatic in nature if we have a six membered ring with an oxygen so you can only have six electrons in the ring if oxygen has uh, formed three bonds and it has a positive charge and just like nitrogen here this oxygen is sp2 hybridized so the lone pair on oxygen is in an orbital that is perpendicular to the pi system it is not involved in conjugation with the pi system and the pi system inside the ring has six electrons involved in conjugation that is Huckel number this molecule or this ion is planar and that is why it is aromatic. We can also have aromaticity in bicyclic molecules or tricyclic molecules. So bicyclic molecule having the required number of electrons present in the inside the ring and involved in conjugation, the molecule will be arom uh, the molecule will be planar and thus it will be aromatic. You can also have three rings involved and uh, the electrons present in the ring if they are involved in conjugation and the molecule is planar, the rings are planar, then the molecule will be aromatic. So these are some of the examples of aromatic, anti-aromatic and non-aromatic molecules or ions. So now I think uh, you can differentiate between molecules looking at their structure and looking at the number of electrons involved in conjugation, the presence or absence of planarity and conjugation to differentiate between these uh, aromatic, anti-aromatic and non-aromatic molecules. Thank you so much for watching. See you later with another video.